Good morning, fifth grade. This is Miss J. Today is Tuesday, April 28th. So in order for us to get started for grammar today, you should have a pencil, scratch paper, and you should have already completed all of the grammar practice. If you haven't done that, pause the video here and go ahead and do that now. Now we're ready to begin. Read the sentence below, then answer the following questions. Did he pick up his clothes from the floor or leave them there? A. Circle any pronouns. B. Draw an arrow from each pronoun to its antecedent. Before we jump right into this question, let's review what is a pronoun? Right, a word such as he, she, it, or her that replaces a noun in a sentence. What is an antecedent? That's right, the noun that the pronoun replaces. Now that we've done some review, let's go ahead and circle any pronouns. So you see I've circled his and them. His is a pronoun because it is, a re it is replacing the noun in the sentence. What noun is his replacing? Or in other words, what is the antecedent? That's right, he. Some may think, is he a pronoun? He is not a pronoun in this sentence because it is acting as a noun. What about them? What is the antecedent for them? That's right, close. Close is the noun that them is replacing. In the sentences below, draw a line between the subject and the predicate. Circle the simple subject, subjects, box the simple predicates. Under each sentence, fill in whether each subject and predicate is a simple or compound. So first, we're asked to draw a line between the subject and the predicate. So we know that the subject is who or what the sentence is about. We know the subject is who or what the sentence is about. What's our predicate? Right, so we know that this sentence is about parents, and children. And the parents and children have arrived at the field or the fair. So we know that we're going to draw a line between children and arrived because our complete subject is many parents and children. Next, we're asked to circle the simple subjects. So we know that our subjects are parents and children. So we're not going to include any other words. 
because then that would be the complete subject, but we only want the simple subjects. Then we're going to box the simple predicate. And we know that parents and children, they have arrived. So arrived is our simple predicate. Now we need to figure out whether subject and predicate is a simple or compound. So let's review what a compound subject is. What is a compound subject? That's right, a compound subject is two or more simple subjects that share a predicate. What is a compound predicate? Right, it's when two or more simple predicates share the same subject. So here we can see that parents and children are sharing the predicate arrive. So this sentence would be considered a compound subject. And our predicate would be simple. Because it is only one predicate that's describing what the subject is doing. Number two, the orange and black cat climbed all the way to the top of the tree. We can draw our line in between cat and climbed. Because cat is our subject and climbed is our predicate, Our simple subject here is cat, right? Because that is what the sentence is about. Orange and black are just describing the cat. So cat here is our simple subject. And the cat climbed, so that is our simple predicate. Now the subject in this sentence is simple because there's only one subject. And our predicate is also simple because there is one predicate that's describing where the subject, what the subject is doing. Number three, at the beach, the seagulls pecked and ate crumbs left behind visitors. Our subject in this sentence are the seagulls. So we're going to draw a line between the seagulls and peck. We know that our subject is seagulls. And we know that our predicates are pecked and eight. Because those two predicates are describing what the seagull is doing. The seagulls pecked and ate crumbs left behind by visitors. So we have two predicates that are sharing one subject. So we have a simple subject.
and a compound predicate. Number four, periods and commas are used to separate or show the end of different ideas. So, periods and commas are our subject in this sentence, and our predicate is are used, right? Because are is a helping verb. I'm going to draw a line between commas and are. Periods and commas are our subjects. And are used is our simple predicate because it is a verb phrase. Now this one may be a little tricky because some can mistake separate and show to be predicates here. But in this sentence, separate and show are not used as predicates. Are used is the predicate describing what the period and commas are doing. And separate and show are describing the ways that the periods and commas are used. So in this case, is our subject simple or compound? That's right, it is compound. Because our subjects are sharing a predicate. Is our predicate compound or simple? That's right, simple. Now we're going to plug the correct homophone into the sentence. Number one, during the medieval fair, one knight challenged the other knight to a duel. Duel, D-U-A-L, is consisting of two parts, elements, or aspects. Duel, D-U-E-L, is a contest with deadly weapons arranged between two people in order to settle a point of honor. Which one would go best here? That's right, dual. Number two, the smell coming from the garage, from the garbage was really foul. Foul, F-O-U-L means offensive to senses, having a disgusting taste or smell. Fowl, F-O-W-L, is a type of bird. Which fowl fits best for the sentence? Correct, fowl. Number three. I need to knead the bread before it can rise. So focusing on the first part of the sentence, need, N-E-E-D, means to require something because it is essential. Need, K-N-E-A-D, means to work into dough or paste with hands. So for this first part of the sentence, which would best fit? 
right. N-E-E-D, because it is something that the subject is requiring. I need to need, so obviously in our second part of the sentence, this need would work best because it is talking about kneading the bread before it can rise. Our secret code for today is blanket. B-L-A-N-K-E-T. In lowercase letters, again, the secret code is blanket. B-L-A-N-K-E-T. Number four. My knee is really in pain, and I don't know what's causing the throbbing. Pain, P-A-N-E, is a sheet of glass in a window or door. Pain, P-A-I-N, is physical suffering or discomfort. Which works best with this sentence? Right. P-A-I-N because the sentence is talking about a physical suffering. Awesome. Lastly, I'm going to put a smiley face on top of proper adjectives and put a star on top of each proper noun, then fix my capitalization mistakes. So for number one, we went to the most delicious Brazilian restaurant in East Boston on Saturday. Let's quickly go over what are proper adjectives. That's right. Proper adjectives describe people, place, or things that are proper nouns. What is a proper noun? That's right. A specific person, place, or thing that should always be capitalized. So Brazilian is a proper adjective of Brazil. So that would be a proper adjective. East Boston is a particular place. So that is a proper noun. And Saturday is a particular day of the week, so that is also a proper noun. Now we will go and capitalize them, because proper adjectives and proper nouns should always be capitalized. Make sure that if your work does not look like mine, that you're going back and correcting any mistake that you find. Number two, when someone important passes away, the American flag at the White House and in all public places is lowered to half staff to respect the person who died. So we know that American is, an, is a proper adjective for America. So we'll put a smiley face there. And the White House is a particular place. So that is a proper noun. And they should be capitalized. Awesome. So that's all we have for grammar for today. Make sure that you're reaching out for to teachers for any questions or any concerns about anything um, that you're confused about. Have a great day, everyone.